What's going on everyone, Nightwolf29 here back at it again, presenting you with another segment of Gamer Rundown. A uh, new segment that I have now started where I speak on different topics, gaming topics throughout the week, and my own opinions on the different games. So let's jump right into it. We're first going to speak about Need for Speed Payback and the flop that came with it. Now it's been released this past week and so far the reviews have not been that great for the game. For such a great series, way back when, when everyone loved just driving around and racing all these different types of cars, it just has not been the same. Most reviewers have been saying that the game where it did progress in its last game, it's almost like it took some other elements out. So best way of saying it, one step forward, two steps back. Which is unfortunate because as I said, Need for Speed was definitely a great series, but I personally have not bought a Need for Speed game in the past three generations of games that have come through with it. Also this past week, Call of Duty World War II surpassed $500 million worldwide sales over this past weekend, which is absolutely incredible. Of course, Call of Duty has been a very popular series, and taking it back to its roots with World War II has been awesome. I have not played it just yet, but from what I'm hearing, it has been pretty good. However, I've been burned in the past with Call of Duty, so I may or may not get it, which pretty much means I'm not going to get it. Over this past weekend, Assassin's Creed sales have gone up 100% over the same release window that Assassin's Creed Syndicate uh, had sold. Now this is really great for the series because Assassin's Creed uh, overall was becoming a little bit stagnant, especially with these past games with Syndicate and Black Flag and its other uh, iterations that have also come out with it. So this is very great news for Ubisoft and it's great news for the fans. As I had spoke about in my last video, Assassin's Creed Origins revamped the combat, redid the storyline and has been great and engaging. I'm currently playing it now and I'm absolutely loving it. Horizon Zero Dawn Frozen Wilds DLC dropped this past week as well, adding on a brand new area, brand new quests, weapons, and things to do within the game. Now if you do want to jump in and play it, of course you have to download the new DLC. You also have to leave the starting area of the game. Once you do that, just head north and you'll run into the characters that will help to unlock the rest of that area. Uh, I have also played Horizon Zero Dawn. It's been an absolutely great game and I am excited to check out more of the DLC and more videos that are on it. Lawbreakers on PC and also on PlayStation 4 is going to be free this weekend on Steam and has a 50% off sale on the PC and the PlayStation 4. Now Lawbreakers created by Cliff Blazinski who is of Gears of War fame has really try to get this series going and if you haven't heard of Lawbreakers it's like a Quake Arena style game where all the different characters have different abilities uh, different ways of playing uh, almost similar to Overwatch however it has not been doing that great uh, according to Steam there was a time this weekend where a concurrent number of players was only 10 10 that I have actually never heard of that ever for a game especially for a game that has been so highly invested in and has been created by a AAA type publisher or developer. But then again, since Cliffy B left with the Gears of War franchise, a lot of his stuff has been struggling to gain some traction. So hopefully you can just go check it out. Like I said, free this weekend on Steam, 50% off sale, PlayStation 4 and the PC. So go ahead, try it out, jump right in. Last but not least, we're speaking on Red Dead Redemption 2 where the unfortunate news came out that Take-Two Interactive is actually planning to implement microtransactions in all of its future games. So this definitely includes Red Dead 2. And this is highly unfortunate because microtransactions are a very controversial topic when it comes to gaming. And a lot of people see this as just a price grab for major developers and publishers to just gain more money out of you. Games already cost $60 as it is, why do you want to pay even more to gain a few new weapons or like other cosmetic type things? Now not all microtransactions are bad. Some things are pretty great. Now if we're talking about DLC that can further expand the game, that's awesome. However, if content is locked on the CD or within the game and then you have to pay this extra money to unlock it right then and there, that's not really the best move. 
and that really irks most gamers. So, although it seems like Take Two is pretty adamant about implementing microtransactions in all its future games, Hopefully they do it in the right way and not in a way that just seems like such a price grab. Well, that's going to be it for this segment of Gamer Rundown. Hopefully you liked what you saw and hopefully you agree or disagree with my opinions. Of course, subscribe to my page. You can make comments or different things of whatever I've discussed throughout this video. And as always, I will talk to you later.